Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, think you guys can do a video on different types of Old West lawmen? Christopher Kane. We can do that, but let's combine it with addressing the part episode. Roll them. The 19th century West was being rapidly populated by all kinds of folks looking to find their spot in this world. Not just nice, hard-working, and God-fearing folks, but those nasty, no-good miscreants, too. <laughs> Highwaymen, bank robbers, rustlers, and murderers were running rampant on the frontier and taking advantage of the scarce court systems and law. Unlike today, the police force in a town could be just a sheriff and his deputy. In bigger cities, there was a need for more deputies as long as there was a budget for it. Some lawmen started out as outlaws, and some outlaws started out as lawmen. Even a couple of them were doing both at the same time. Aw, oh, heck, there were a lot of similarities between the two professions. Both were not afraid to employ a firearm or easy to back down. Neither would hesitate to use force to get what they wanted, and both men had nerves of steel. There were various types of lawmen in the Old West. A sheriff was elected by county residents, whereas a marshal was appointed by a city council or a higher official. U.S. Marshals were appointed by the Attorney General, and Rangers were formed by territory or state legislations. Not that there was any competition between them all. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Sooner or later, I'm greater than you. Many of them were paid a percentage of the arrests made or bounties collected. Salaries were not very much, and their duties often included jobs like cleaning the streets. Famous lawmen such as White Earp, Bat Masterson, and others tended to do these jobs for only a short while. If you had other skills like gambling, that paid more, and you didn't have to sweep up horse apples. I told you I'd clean up this one horse town. Dressing for the lawmen can be challenging. Arizona Red won first place for dressing as a sheriff who just got off the trail from transporting a prisoner. He decided to forego the tie he would normally wear in town for a bandana, which is a more useful accessory for the trail. Yet, he was still presentable in case he needed to approach a judge. Arizona Red's suspension badge is a reproduction of those found in the 1880s. Badges? We ain't got no badges. Now, we'll go into badges in another episode, but what I can summarize is make sure you have a badge that fits your law enforcer. We don't need no badges. Well, yeah, you actually do. The badge is worn on the left side of the chest where you would pledge to the flag to signify their pledge to protect which dates all the way back to the Knights of the Middle Ages. <laughs> I don't have to show you any stinking bunches! Okay, just, just chill out, dude. Wearing silk vests and fancy ties is terrific, but remember, not all lawmen were making the big bucks and could afford such niceties. When you're dressing, think of the economy of the town you're marshal in and what your law dog's current situation is. Is he leading a posse out of town, sitting in his office doing paperwork, or doing his rounds on Saturday night? Even though they weren't making the big bucks, they still held a leadership role amongst the population. I'm going to declare a holiday. Paying attention to the fine details will help you dress as the right peacekeeper for your show or living history presentation. Well, I hope you learned something about lawmen in the Old West. As always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.